What's going on, you guys? Lit Man Tuck is coming back at you with another book review. This one, I'm going back into the urban fiction genre. This is one of my favorites, one of my favorite authors, authors right here. I always say that. I just love it all, man. But this is the Hood Rat series. If you like the animal series, then you probably already read with this one. If you like urban fiction, if you've done Eric Jerome Dickey back in the day and you do urban fiction now, this is one for you. I'm telling you, man, it is like a mix of hip hop, R&B, basically on steroids. You know what I'm saying? It has the hood stuff in there. It has the ratchet stuff. And it's a very fun series. So Quan, great author, man. He has some good stuff out there. And most of the books in this series is read by Carrie Height. If you haven't read any Carrie, Carrie Height, or excuse me, if you haven't listened to any Carrie Height books, man, I'm telling you, you are missing out. He does a really good job of bringing out the characters. Now, let's get into this. The first series of the book is called, of course, Hood Rat. Hood Rat. A woman of questionable repute, one who has been known to get around. It even gives you a definition of it. Yoshi is young, fine, and larcenous. She lives her life playing on men's hearts as well as their pockets, but she learns the hard way that all that glitters isn't gold. Billy, and that's a girl, by the way, a former high school basketball star is at the end of her rope with the opposite sex. To her, all men are dogs. So she secretly seeks comfort in the arms of women until she meets a man who makes her reevaluate her feelings. Reese, she's funny, is an all around, is a round away chick trying to keep up with the Joneses. There is a revolving door on her bedroom as she searches for the love she's always felt was missing. When her promiscu, when her promiscu, ooh, I can't say that word today. When her promiscuity, I'm just going to leave it like that, leaves her pregnant after a one night stand, Reese is faced with the task of breaking an age old cycle passed down from one mother to daughter in her family and standing on her own. Rhonda is 20 something with three kids from three different men and she's riding the system all the way to the bank. To her, work is a dirty word. Between the multiple checks she gets from the government and the game she plays with men, she's living the life of a ghetto superstar. But the game soon turns ugly when one of her sponsors decides to get some payback. Back. Harlem has never seen four friends as scandalous as these. The neighborhood would never be the same again. I'm telling you, man, Hood Rat is very funny. It's very fast paced. And as you can see, it's, um, you know, some of the main characters are female. But here's the thing. There's a lot of strong male leads in the book. Don't let this fool you, man. This is like this is more like a bunch of episodes put together. Still Hood. Is book number two in the Hood Rat series, the unforgettable sequel to the number one bestseller, Hood Rat. Only the strong survive on the streets of Brooklyn. While Dina Jones definitely has what it takes to succeed, she wants out. She's determined to make it out of Crooklyn by any means necessary and doesn't have a problem manipulating men to get what she wants. True has finally made it. His debut album has hit the streets going has the streets going crazy and is threatening to spill over into the mainstream. After the murder of his group, his jump off and his almost his dreams. True's life is finally starting to look up until karma catches up with him. Somebody wants him dead, and he doesn't know why or does he? Ja and Yoshi were supposed to have a romance straight out of a story, but there are no such things as fairy tales in the ghetto. Her position as a stylist keeps her in the mix, and in the company of some industry heavyweights, Ja tries to be understanding, but he can't help but wonder just how much can he trust his girlfriend? He had promised to love her regardless of her past, but in addition to wondering whether his girlfriend is creeping with their clients, Ja has a bigger problem as someone's trying to kill him. Still Hood, man. This one, I'm telling you, man, it's just a continuation of Hood Red, of course, but it is exciting. It introduces new characters like Ja. He's a straight up gangster. He's hard body. And um, True, man. That's a that's a tough one right there. Section eight is another one, man. This one is read by Napore Groves, not Carrie Height. I didn't like it, but she did a really good job. I ain't going I'm not gonna front on that. So section eight, book three, taught by her drug addict mother to get hers by any means necessary. Tiana's heart is cold, but she holds a warm place in it for Duhan. The father of her two sons, her on again, off again boyfriend since they were teenagers, her knight in shiny armor. But with Duhan behind bars and everything she loves sees, she finds herself starting over in the same neighborhood that she she swore she had never returned to. With her best friends Gucci, Boots, and Tracy, she finds herself rediscovering her own life. 
and suddenly begins to wonder if she's really cut out to be a prisoner's wife. Section 8 man is really funny. I mean, Duhan's wife, she was a gangster's wife, but he goes to jail and she doesn't have that life anymore. She has to go back to the hood and face all those people she styled on. Very funny series, Section 8. The next one on here is Welfare, Welfare Wifeys. I can't say Welfare for some reason, man. It's another hood rat, rat novel, by, novel by Quan. This is another one that's really funny that these people are put in ratchet situations. I'm going to go ahead and read the description. In Frederick Douglass Housing Projects, the name of Jada Butler is synonymous with drama, but there is about to be a new contender of the drone throne of ghetto antics. Malika is a young single mother trying to make it in life in public housing. When she meets Teddy, she has a new hope for the future. The only problem is he's already married. Gucci's fiance is now a rising star in the music industry. She's thrilled when his tour begins him, brings him to New York. But she doesn't know it's more than music bringing her back. After her apartment mysteriously, bur mysteriously burns down, Tiana is relocated to a plush high rise in upper Manhattan. She is pulling her life together when a ghost from her past appears. Don is making money hand over fist with the artist he signed to Big Dog Records. And you know, you get the rest, man. Welfare Wifey, it has Animal in it, which is one of the main characters of all the series. It has Gucci, which... If, I'm telling you, if you haven't read that animal series, you need to check out. But it is a very fast-paced book. Eviction Notice, the next hood rat novel, is another one that is funny. These girls are trying not to get evicted. From number one S's best-selling author Quan comes the next installment of his best-selling hood rat series, Portia, the ghetto princess, Sahara, the scandalous baby mama, Frankie, aka Francine, the con artist. These three girls live in one apartment and are into all kinds of hood foolishness while having fun until the day they find an eviction notice taped to their door. Now they have 72 hours to come up with all the money they owe in months of back rent. Of course, Don B is still up to his old tricks with Big Dog Entertainment and is trying to find an artist to replace Animal. He comes across Lord Scientific, a rapper from Newark, which proves to be much more than even Don B can handle. Meanwhile, the police and Gucci are still searching for Animal. They'll uncover something about him and his abduction that no one was prepared for. Oh my God, man. This one was straight up good. I mean, it has, it talks about Animal. It's fast paced. It's another fast paced book. I'm telling you, the Hood Rat series by Quan, man, is well written. And if I'm telling you to do the Audible, get the Audible. I'm over here trying to tell you, man, carry height tricks this thing out. Now, some of the other narrators, they do a great job too, but I'm telling you, man, this this series is content rich. It has well-developed characters. Khan does a great job on this one. I'm telling you, if you like urban fiction or if you think you like urban fiction, this is one that you need to check out. It has all the fun, all the drama. It has violence, bloods, guts, and all that fun stuff. That's all I got for this one, man. I am out.